Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Brahms, The Boy, Part 2. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a lovable mother named Lisa, returning home from work amidst the solemn night. Upon arriving, Lisa seeks for her son, Jude, but only sees a pair of shoes. Shortly, Jude hides and pranks Lisa by shocking her in the silent atmosphere. A little later, Lisa answers the call from her husband, Sean. In their video chat, Sean assures Lisa and Jude's safety. He also states that he will work late at night because of his hectic schedule. Thus, Lisa patiently understands and will care for Jude the entire night. When the time to sleep arrives, Lisa visits Jude for a good night message. She calms Jude from being scared by giving him a teddy bear to hug. As they sleep in the middle of the night, Lisa hears a clattering sound causing her to rise. She sees shadows and begins looking for Jude. However, Lisa realizes that Jude is not in his bed anymore. She wanders the entire house, thinking that it's a prank again. Lisa sees Jude hiding, so she turns on the light. A terrifying tension arises when Jude whispers not to turn on the light. Unfortunately, Lisa switches it on, only to get attacked by burglars. Lisa attempts to fight back, while Jude presses the alarm sound. While composing her strength, Lisa manages to knock down one of the burglars but the other one smashes Lisa's head, causing her to be unconscious. As this happens, Jude helplessly witnesses Lisa unconscious on the floor. With all the tragic past, dramatic changes occur in their present lives after five months. Currently, Jude is having a consultation with a therapist. Jude cannot speak this time and communicates only through drawing and writing. According to the therapist, Jude develops mutism, removing the desire to speak from stress and anxiety. Then the couple talk to the therapist about ways to help Jude. During dinner, the family eats together and gets filled with silence. Liz endures pain in her head during bedtime, signifying a head injury's aftermath. Scene proposes to move to another place, so Jude and Lisa can heal quickly. Later, Jude comes in with the phrase, sleep with you, wanting to be with his parents. As they all sleep, a commotion arises when Lisa gets choked by the same burglar. Fortunately, Scene saves her from a dark nightmare by waking her up, and Jude remembers the horrific past again. The following day, the entire family decides to go to the countryside for a new beginning. A female caretaker welcomes them there, giving quick assistance in the guest house. They enter the house, and a man from afar glances, signifying puzzling chaos. Afterward, Scene happily suggests having some nature explorations. They then wander the nearby forest, leading them to see the main mansion, Glenview Estate. Meanwhile, the mysterious atmosphere distracts Ju after hearing several whispers. An enigmatic tension illuminates when the voices state his name, asking him to follow. Curious, Jude follows the whispers, leading him to see a doll's hand. Afterward, Jude digs the dirt to get the berry toy, only to see a porcelain doll from a small coffin. As this happens, the couple become unaware that Jude is not with them. As they attempt to roam the house, they suddenly realize that Jude is missing. Worried, they both immediately run to find Jude in the mysterious place. Not long after, Jude appears carrying the porcelain doll. In response, Lisa asks if Jude prefers to take it home, and Jude nods his head. Upon arriving home, Lisa begins cleaning and wiping the porcelain doll's dirt. Moments later, Jude sees a piece of paper from the pocket, only to see a list of rules, symbolizing a hidden truth. As Lisa restores the porcelain doll, she realizes it seems broken before because of its traces. Subsequently, Lisa encounters enigmatic scenery when they are about to sleep. She sees the porcelain doll looking at him in the mirror's reflection, but it appears normal when she checks back. The following day, Lisa wakes up to the melodic sound of a piano. She sees Jude playing the piano and recognizes the porcelain doll with new clothes. She also praises Jude for changing the porcelain doll's clothes, but Jude shakes his head that he did not. During breakfast, Jude writes the phrase, in the woods, to answer the question in his notebook. However, the said question appears to be written by another individual. Later, Sean goes to ask Jude about the porcelain doll's name. In response, Jude indicates the phrase Brahms. He also writes, he told me, implying that it does not come from him. Lisa asks if he wants to study, but Jude prefers to be in the woods. As they walk the solemn woods, Jude hears the whispers again. He follows the voices, leading them to find the coffin where they found Brahms. Shortly, a neighbor and his dog arrive, distracting them. Lisa apologizes that they are new to the place, while neighbor introduces his aggressive dog. Interestingly, the dog angrily looks at Brahms, telling a puzzling sign. Afterward, neighbor accompanies Lisa and Jude to their home from the woods. Upon arriving, Scene welcomes them. Walking away, neighbor glances at Brahms, as if danger is slowly approaching. At night, Lisa shares her confusion with her husband about the creepiness of Brahms. However, Scene whispers that it's not the doll, but might be her as the problem. Lisa gets offended and walks out. When Lisa goes to her room, she surprisingly hears Jude speaking to Brahms. She hears Jude, who mentions Brahms disliking the dog. 
Pleased by Jude's recovery, the couple sneakily listen at the doorway. Lisa attempts to enter the room, and Jude stops speaking. They keep asking Jude about random things, but Jude only shakes his head and writes the responses. Consequently, Jude shares that Brahms hates the neighbor's dog. The couple get amazed and give Jude more time with Brahms. Later, while everyone is sleeping, Lisa opens her eyes and roams the house. While she glances at Brahms, a burglar strangles her, leading to a commotion. Meanwhile, Sean rescues her from sleepwalking and a horrific nightmare. She then approaches Jude crying at the corner. When Lisa calls him, Jude faces her with a porcelain mask. However, Lisa wakes up again, realizing it was all a dream. She visits Jude's room and sees Brahms still there. She goes back to sleep as Sean comforts her. One sunny day, the entire family has breakfast. At their table, Lisa recognizes Jude's notebook with several rules, including the last rule, always and forever. A little later, Lisa checks Jude's room to get the laundry. She sees the teddy bear, destroyed and ripped, leading her to approach Jude. The couple then talk to Jude about the destroyed stuffed toy. Jude shakes his head to deny that he did not destroy it. Lisa assumes Jude is lying, so she punishes him by sending him to the room and leaving Brahms at the sala. A little later, a horrifying tension emerges when Lisa recognizes Brahms turning his head toward her. She assumes that it might be a result of hallucinations. Shortly, Lisa gets disturbed by the television noise. She turns off the television, only to see the remote beside Brahms. Lisa thinks that Jude is playing and annoying her. She then visits and scolds Jude to his room, but Jude expresses that he never comes out. With all the strange events, Lisa approaches Brahms to see if it is moving or alive, but no movements are seen. She goes back to reading until she hears footsteps from the living room. She follows the noise, proceeds to the locked room, and warns Jude to open the door. Upon entering the locked door, she shockingly sees Brahms sitting, implying a mysterious horror. During the night, Jude goes to Lisa's room to apologize. He writes sorry for scaring in his notebook. He also expresses that Brahms is sorry too. Consequently, Lisa begins overthinking by sharing her weird experiences with her husband. One day, the couple consult their therapist about Jude. The therapist emphasizes that a doll serves as a friend and will help Jude recover from the trauma. In the afternoon, Lisa starts searching on the internet about the creepy Brahms. She clicks the website that identifies an antique doll's history and code. After moments of browsing, Lisa learns how to check a code of an antique doll and also reads a Glenview Estate dark history. She discovers that a man once lived inside the walls. Simultaneously, Jude sketches something in his notebook. Neighbor suddenly appears and greets Jude in the backyard. Jude shares the doll's name as Brahms, but Neymar seems unsurprised after hearing the word Brahms. Alarmingly, Neymar stares at Brahms as if he's familiar with the hidden secret. Lisa interrupts them and fetches Jude to go inside. One night, Lisa is still awake while everyone sleeps. She visits Jude's bedroom to check Brahms' code. She then copies the code H606 on Bram's foot and further observes the doll. A little later, Brahms' mouth starts releasing several flies, causing Lisa to shout. Thus, Sean and Jude get awakened, but the flies are now gone, making them think as mere illusion. The following day, Lisa enters the code, but gets no results. She checks on Jude, but sees no one. Scanning the notebook, Lisa discovers disturbing sketches. She sees a drawing of a dying dog and a boy killing a mother and father. Furthermore, she finds messages that Jude and Brahms should be together forever. Shortly, Jude enters the room in a black suit. Lisa then goes outside and invites Jude for dinner in 15 minutes. During the dinner, June attempts to bring Brahms to the table. Unfortunately, Lisa forces Jude to disregard Brahms, but Seen patiently permits it. As they eat together, Seen shares that he will invite Jude's cousins and family for a get-together. In response, Jude states that no guest is allowed according to Brahms' rule. After that, Lisa states that their decisions matter more than Brahms. Then Jude gets mad and refuses to eat. Lisa strictly orders that Jude can only leave the table after eating. Shortly, Lisa approaches Jude again, stating that Brahms is not a person. Jude suddenly replies that she's breaking the rules and making Brahms mad. As a result, Lisa punishes Jude by ordering him to stay in place all night. A frightening commotion illuminates when Lisa hears a broken and banging sound, only to see the table wholly ruined. Jude worriedly denies it and writes in his notebook that the reason is Brahms' anger. Confused, Lisa approaches her husband, sharing the violent drawings in the notebook, such as a dog being killed and parents getting murdered. However, Sean does not find anything and doubts Lisa's sentiments. Sean plans to throw Brahms the following day while Jude is in his room listening to the conversation. Meanwhile, neighbor roams the entire woods and sees his dog brutally dead. One morning, Lisa and Sean visit Jude's room, only to see a note, you shouldn't have followed the rules. Rattled, they check every corner until they decide to search the opposite corners. Lisa goes toward the horrifying mansion and sees the door widely open. 
she enters the mansion filled with whispers. A little later, Lisa hears footsteps and climbs up the stairs. There, she sees the family portrait of the Heelchair family. She wanders the entire house, hearing Jude's voice and several whispers. With such bravery, Lisa continuously searches for Jude until she finds Brahms sitting in one corner. A terrifying tension appears when Jude enters the room with a porcelain mask on his face. Lisa approaches Jude and removes the mask. Surprisingly, Jude can now speak, apologizing to Lisa for frightening her. Delighted, Lisa warmly embraces Jude until another banging sound echoes. The door forcibly opens where Scene and neighbor enter. Hearing Jude's voice, Scene suddenly feels happy, and the entire family leaves the horrifying mansion. As they exit, neighbor shares the story that a family lives in the mansion with an odd child. He elaborates that the child killed a little girl and has lived inside the wall for 20 years. He also states that the parents committed suicide while the child gets grown up and killed two guys. The story ends when the said child gets buried too. Curious, Lisa asks the child's name, and neighbor says, Brahms. Intrigued by the peculiarity, Scene also asks where's the dog, and neighbor states that it's now lifeless in the woods. The following day, Jude attends the therapist consultation with Brahms next to him. Jude introduces Brahms and states that his new friend has lived with several families. He further emphasizes that Brahms gets mad if they become separated and wants to live with the family. Moments later, the couple talk to the therapist. They assume that Jude might be responsible for the dog's death. In response, Scene states that they will revisit the therapist soon after the arrival of their guests. Later, Scene's brother and family arrive for a get-together. Scene's brother gleefully greets Jude and Brahms. Jude carries Brahms and decides to go into the yard to play with his two cousins, nicknamed Boy and Girl. As they try to familiarize themselves, the boy disrespectfully calls Jude crazy or mental. On the other hand, Girl appears to be kind, stopping Boy from saying negative things. With his bully attitude, Boy grabs a wooden hammer to smash a ball and break Brahms. Offended, Jude warns him that Brahms' anger will cause him to regret it. The tension resumes when Boy mocks Girl 2 by getting the cap. Then Jude wants to defend Girl by engaging in a tug of war over Boy. Shortly, Brahms' head slowly moves, implying a danger. As they pull each other, Jude releases, causing Boy to stumble and get impaled by a sharp wood on the ground. As this happens, Lisa observes the happenings and calls everyone about the accident. Then Boy gets rushed to the hospital by his family and scene. For an hour, Lisa and Jude patiently wait and comfort each other about the accident. Jude suddenly shares that Brahms is not letting him go. Jude mentions that Brahms wants him to be in the mansion forever. He also states that Brahms will kill anyone who will hinder the plan. Lisa comforts Jude and stares at Brahms in the front yard. She calls the therapist but gets no response. Shortly, she decides to research the enigmatic Brahms by entering the reversed code H909. Upon researching, Lisa figures out the Heelshire family and the real Brahms holding the porcelain doll. She discovers how the real Brahms killed the little girl and leaves the wall for 20 years before dying. As he further investigates, Lisa learns that another child also killed his mother and brother and blames the porcelain doll. She then sees that the killing cycle continues with the porcelain doll's presence. At last, Lisa realizes that all the victims complain first of hearing voices, turning them into killers by a porcelain doll. She concludes that most children victims say the porcelain doll made them murder their loved ones if the rules aren't followed. Meanwhile, C meets a stranger in the convenience store, and the stranger asks about his address. When Scene states Glenview Estate, the strangers alarmingly tell a story about the scary place. The stranger shares that several tragedies transpired in the past, wherein a porcelain doll speaks to children, causing them to be violent. A revelation arises when a stranger mentions that an old crazy man named Neighbor bought the horrifying house after the Hillshires. Without delay, Scene rushes to his home, securing his family's safety. Consequently, Lisa consistently researches until she sees Brahms missing in the front yard. Unhesitatingly, Lisa calls for Jude but sees no one. A terrifying misery emerges when Neighbor points the gun at Lisa. As they sit at the table, Neighbor emphasizes that he needs his freedom and needs to allow Jude to the mansion to unite with Brahms. He shares that he also heard whispers, telling him to fix the broken porcelain doll. Lastly, Neighbor states that it's always been the doll that targets the weak ones for the curse to happen. Suddenly, Lisa grabs the candle and pours the melted wax onto Neighbor's face to run from the house. Holding a gun, Lisa enters the horrific mansion. Later, she sees Jude with a mask carrying Brahms. Calmly, Lisa slowly approaches and gets Brahms away from Jude. However, when Lisa turns her head back, Jude is now pointing a gun toward her. Possessed by the doll, Jude threatens his mother for consistently failing to protect him from the burglar, the dog, and boy. Fortunately, Lisa remains calm and admits everything Jude is saying. She then tries to awaken Jude by stating that a family will never be a family without a mother. 
Shortly, Cena arrives and smashes Brahms into pieces. Thus, Jude regains his consciousness from the illusionary episodes. Neighbor comes and becomes worried. He warns that it will never be over, and Brahms will also punish him. Afterward, Brahms stands out of nowhere, revealing a more demonic form behind the porcelain mask. He then looks at Neighbor and lifts him in the air. A blast from the fireplace dives that pushes them and kills Neighbor. Meanwhile, Jude approaches and carries Brahms. The couple then see Jude holding Brahms near the fireplace. Later, Jude throws Brahms in the middle of the fire, but Jude's eyes tell a hidden truth. The movie ends with the entire family going back to their home. The atmosphere is filled with happiness for a new beginning. As they all sleep, Jude wakes up and reveals a porcelain mask in his closet. He begins wearing it and says, Brahms will be happy here. It is then revealed that the curse of the porcelain doll resumes, residing now in Jude's body for a new misery. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.